All right, so in this video, I would like to talk about the mechanism behind a Michael reaction. I have a sample reaction for us to do here. But first, let's talk about what exactly a Michael reaction is. So as I have written here, a Michael reaction is a nucleophilic addition reaction, sometimes simply referred to as just a Michael addition. And a Michael reaction involves the nucleophilic addition of a carbanion or some other nucleophile, but most commonly a carbanion to an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So what is that going to look like? Well, let's look at our example here. Which of these would be the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl? So in our reactant side of things up here, let's change the marker to red and talk about this. So we have carbonyl here, we have a carbonyl here. This carbonyl is as we can see, an ester, because we have this oxygen with the functional group here, this ethyl functional group. And we have a carbonyl here. So which of these two compounds is going to be the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl? Well, it's going to be this guy here on the left, and let me walk you through why. So this, uh, the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound is frequently referred to as the Michael acceptor in Michael reactions. And it's, an, it's called alpha-beta unsaturated because here's the carbonyl group. And so the, there are two alpha carbons. There are two carbons that are alpha to this carbonyl. The first one I've already labeled right here is an alpha carbon. And this carbon right here is also an alpha carbon. So this carbon down here, just like I've listed this one as beta, is also a beta carbon. But this side of the carbonyl compound, this side uh, uh, of the cyclohexanone, <clears throat> is fully saturated because, as you can see, there's just a sigma bond here. So if we went and drew in all of the hydrogens here, let me draw them in in red, we would have a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, and a hydrogen here. Well, these carbons have four bonds, and uh, this carbon right here and this carbon right here, and they're fully saturated with the maximum number of hydrogens that they can have with those bonds. Well, this carbon, these carbons over here on the right, the alpha and the beta carbons on the right side of the cyclohexanone, well, they have a pi bond, and so they aren't fully saturated. So they are unsaturated to some degree, and so that is why this is referred to as an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, because in between the alpha and beta carbons, those carbons are not fully saturated. There's a, there's a pi bond in between them causing them not to be fully saturated. And so this, this is just one example compound, but in all of them you would have the carbonyl group attached to a carbon, and then some form of, here's your alpha carbon, here's your beta carbon. These carbons are going to be unsaturated. So that is what is referred to when we're talking about an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound. So, all right, let's go through this nucleophilic addition reaction of the carbon ion to an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl. Well, if we look at this, do you see a carbanion anywhere? Well, this is obviously not going to be the carbanion because that's our alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound. And this guy over here, all of these carbons, unless I've drawn something wrong, which I haven't, don't have any lone pairs and they don't have any, um, uh, any charge on them. So this carbon has four bonds. This carbon has four bonds, this carbon has four bonds, this carbon has four bonds. So none of them are carbocations or carbanions. So at this point, we're going to need to do something to this molecule in order to allow us to facilitate the Michael addition. So we need to make one of these carbons a carbanion. So let's look at the reagents we're going to use to see what is going to facilitate this. Well, we have here sodium ethoxide and ethanol. Now, the ethanol is not actually going to take place, uh, is not going to actually perform any function in the reaction itself. It's not going to be a reactive compound here until we get to our very last step. So for now, let's just not worry about it. We're going to have to use this compound here, the sodium ethoxide, in order to make one of these carbons 
the carbon ions. So how's that going to work? Well, let's look at the mechanics of what's going on here in this screen. So I've written out our, uh, our compound here, uh, the second reactant in our Michael addition. And I have written out the sodium ethoxide as it would be ionized in solution. So we have the positive sodium atom, and then we have over here the negative ethoxide ion. So what's going to take place? Well, we know that there, the action is going to be happening here on this alpha carbon in this compound. Why is this the alpha carbon? Well, if we look here, we have a carbonyl, but this is not just any carbonyl. This is a carbonyl as part of an ester. And so the first carbon attached to the carbon involved in the ester carbonyl is going to be our alpha carbon in this compound. So that's where we know uh, the, uh, the action is going to take place. But the first bit of action is going to be on one of these hydrogens. Which one? Well, take your pick. doesn't matter. We're going to take the negative charge from this ethoxide ion, the ionized ethoxide, and we will... Let's see how we can do this. There we go. Well, maybe not. We're going to attack one of these hydrogens. And so that's going to bond this ethoxide ion to this hydrogen. And it's going to need... We're going to have to kick these electrons onto this alpha carbon, so we'll, that's going to happen. Well, let's see. There we go. That's going to happen. So, what is the next thing that we're going to proceed to? Well, let's look here. We're going to get, yeah, well, actually, I probably need more room to write this, so we're, uh, we're going to proceed to have a CH3 group, this guy right here, maintained, which is going to be attached to our carbonyl carbon, this guy and attached to this carbon. Now, what happened to this carbon? Well, it still has one of its hydrogens, so we'll draw that in. But now it's got a lone pair and a negative charge. Because how many bonds does it have? Only three. The other bond here being to this carbonyl carbon that's attached to the OET. So, all right. Next step. What have we created here when we had this ethoxide ion uh, attached to this H? Well, we've created H. O E T. Well, what's that? Well, if we write it in a different direction, E T O H, well, look, that looks familiar. It's just ethanol, which we need in this reaction. So, we know that we have ethanol just lying around now, in addition. So, we'll go ahead and write that in. Plus, ETOH. All right, so we've got our ethanol, and we've got this guy going on here. Now, what's going to need to happen here? We have this carbocation, so now we can facilitate the carbocation addition to the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl. So now it's time for this guy to come into the action. So, well, look here. All right, we've got this compound here. Of course, I've just redrawn what this guy is. So that's the same thing we're looking at. All right, and, well, why don't we have our ethanol? Why don't we? Well, we, we don't need to draw that in yet. Getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, next step. This is pretty simple. What do you think is going to happen? Well, this pi bond is going to be involved, and this carbocation is going to be involved. Carbocation? Carbanion, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> this carbanion is going to be involved. It doesn't have a positive charge, not a carbocation. This carbanion is going to be involved. So... What are these two going to do in their molecular dance? Well, due to electronegativity differences, this guy is going to be attacked. It's going to be the prime spot for this negative side of that carbon, that carbanion's negative, carbo yeah, carbanion's negative charge to attack. And when that happens, it will, of course, add this entire guy right here. But what would happen if we did that without anything else? Five bonds to carbon, absolutely not acceptable. So we need to take these electrons, and, well, we need to move them right here onto this carbon. So that's going to cause this carbon to now have a negative charge. So when we write out the results to this reaction, we end up, well, let me write this line a little bit better. There we go. We end up with this interesting set of compounds. 
Okay, there we go. All right, we're going to have this guy maintained, but look, the pi bond, of course, is gone. We don't have that anymore because why? Because, well, we added this right here. So this CH, because we have to have four bonds there. All right, CH3, and then, of course, our carbonyl OET down here. And what else do we have? Well, don't forget that we have ethanol. All right. Well, let's draw this ethanol a little bit differently because of what's going to happen next. What do you think we're going to do? Well, the ethanol has this hydrogen just sitting here. This carbon, well, you can't tell. You can't answer my question because I didn't draw things right. This carbon is now a carbanion. Because why? Because we added the pi electrons to it here. So now it has a negative charge. What's going to happen now? Well, this negative charge is going to think that this hydrogen is, you know, really good looking and it's going to come over here and attack that hydrogen. When that happens, the electrons from this hydrogen need to go on to the ETO over here and it will create an ethoxide anion again. And we will end up with this, this guy right here. Well, hmm, that looks exactly the same as this, doesn't it? No, nope, slight difference. What happened? This happened. We now have, it's just not drawn in, of course, this is a hydrogen that was added here because, as we didn't have drawn in on this one as well, there was a little hydrogen attached to this side. But that only gave it three bonds, so there was a negative charge. So what we did is we just put a hydrogen here. We hydrated that carbon, giving it four bonds, neutralizing it electrically. And now we have an electrically, electrically neutral compound, and we're completely done. So let's see. Is this compound the compound that we wanted initially? Well, let's go back. And yes, it is exactly the same compound that we initially wanted to synthesize. So it may look pretty odd. You know, you have this guy here and then this guy, and it just how on earth is this going to be added? It just looks like it'll be very complicated. But if you really look at what we did, and I went through it very slowly on purpose, if you look at what we did, we attacked a hydrogen with the negative ethoxide ion. Sodium ethoxide ionized to sodium and ethoxide. The ethoxide attacked, let me change pin colors for this, attacked this hydrogen, put some electrons onto this alpha carbon, and that gave us this compound plus some ethanol. Well, that compound was now able to interact with our initial compound, which was what? A alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound. When it interacted with that, it attacked this carbon. That caused these electrons to go on holiday up here, making this a carbanion. That carbanion then interacted with this. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, that carbanion then interacted with the ethanol after we'd added everything here. The ethanol allowed us to hydrate that and electrically neutralize it. And we ended up with our final compound. Not that difficult. Pretty simple reaction. So looks complicated. Actually, a few very short steps. So that is a walkthrough for a simple Michael addition reaction. The nucleophilic addition reaction between a carbanion or another nucleophile and an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound.